Hey everyone, today we're going to get into NuVex 5 by Gormal Instruments. NuVex 5 is a 5 channel drum sequencer for Reactor 6. Uh, in order to use this, this isn't Reactor Player compatible, so you do have to have the full version of Reactor 6.5. So before we really get into anything and learn how to kind of draw drum patterns and really get into how the synth works, now you'll see here there's uh, 100 presets included, and there are tags at the beginning and end. The tags in the front obviously are going to kind of tell you the BPM range. Anything in your dance is going to be like 120 to like, you know, or 110 maybe to like 140 BPM. Uh, your groove or more your down tempo loops. So these are like hip hop, reggaeton, um, trap, things like that. So these are more around like the 90 uh, or actually maybe around like the 85 to like 100 BPM range. Uh, speed, drum and bass loops. You see right here, these are uh, about like, you know, anywhere from like 150 to and beyond. 150, like 180 BPM for drum and bass. Um, now you'll see the tags at the end. We have link, mod, and standard. Your link presets are going to be the ones that are activated down here with your link button. We'll get into that later. Uh, your mod are going to be loops that have sequenced effects going down here. Uh, your standard are just going to be presets that don't use any of these features down here with the sequencer. You just have a dry signal going through your effects. So first off, we're going to look at basically how the layout goes. Now you can select each one of your channels here, and you can see on the left we have um, we have all of our controls. These are just basic controls for like an EQ, the level, the pan. Uh, your solo or mute, and your mute can be activated with a C4, D4, E4, F4, and G4 on your MIDI keyboard. So you can see now uh, if I press F4 on my keyboard, I can mute. Uh, same goes if I'm on channel 1, if I want to press C4, I can just mute. And you can obviously do this when you're writing a song, or you can do it when you're composing just to kind of get a feel for what you're working with. So basically each channel has a drive, which is just kind of a tape saturation. You can, your mix is right there and the, the shape is right here. We'll kind of put together a little pattern right here. As you can see, we have a dry signal. We have our saturation. This is the shape. You can hear it a little better there. So your left and right button here is going to be kind of like a stereo effect. So what it does basically is it offsets uh, the start of the sample from your left and your right channels. So you can kind of get a little kind of a stereo chorus effect. So we have here. Very subtle. Um, but it sounds really good if you're doing that with hi-hats um, or things like that, percussion samples. So <clears throat> down here we have the, obviously the pitch of the sample here. And you can adjust the start of your sample. This is not really necessarily good for um, for like kick and and hi-hat samples, but it's going to be really good for like any samples you have that are um, longer samples. Like for instance this sample here. Say we want to start it from a little closer into the sample. Now your hold knob here is basically going to be how long it holds the sample when the pattern is triggered. So if we have a really long hold here, it'll play pretty much the whole sample when you have something played. Turn your hold knob down. As you can see here, the more you turn your hold up, the longer it's going to play that sample. Uh, we also have a reverse here if you want to reverse the sample. And let's see. 
you'll want to use this in conjunction with your start knob here. And last, we have our EQ section, and this is pretty self-explanatory. I won't really get into how to use an EQ here. Um, you'll see two different buttons here. You'll see user. If you want to drop your own sample in here, you can uh, you know, drop a sample from anywhere and use any one of your samples you know, from your own library. Uh, but for now, we'll just get into the library that's included with it. You have five different categories here. We'll start with the first one, which is going to be your kick drums and your toms. So we have 70 kick drums here and 30 toms. And you can just select on each one you want. And 32 sounds good, so we'll just kind of write a little beat. And as you can see here, all I'm doing to uh, draw a pattern here is just um, just click, just dragging with my mouse. And this is the, obviously the velocity. So um, your next category is going to be your snares category, and. We have 80 snares and 20 claps. And your percussion, these are just a bunch of random percussion samples. Uh, these are more of your highs, like your shakers and your tambourines and things like that down here. Uh, these are some animal noises, if you want to use some animal noises. I've actually used these in quite a few of my, my songs, so feel free to use them yourself. And we just have some cartoon samples up here. And that's all for the percussion. Highs up here, these are going to be our hi-hats. So 1 through 25 are going to be closed hi-hats. 26 through 50 are going to be open hi-hats. And these are all crash cymbals down here and ride cymbals. And as you can see, everything's kind of color-coded just to kind of keep you, uh, just to kind of help know what you're looking at down here. Uh, your IRL samples are just going to be like just just random, uh, like synth or just you know real life samples. Like we have some um, <clears throat> sampled Friday the Thirteenth down there, chainsaw, just random samples, kitty cat. So it's pretty easy to browse through your samples. You know when which, when you're when you're going through here, uh, we won't really get into too much because there's not really I didn't want to put much of a focus on sample editing in here the purpose is to you know edit your own samples in an external sample editor uh, most of you probably already have a pretty huge library of samples if you've been producing music for any amount of time so uh, definitely did not put a focus here on your sample editing this is for sample playing now that we've gone over that let's look at um, our actual editing and drawing of notes in the sequencer. So as you can see, I've got right now the BPM is 120 BPM, and this is playing, you know, these are obviously going to be 16th notes here. We'll put like a snare drum or a kick drum so we can hear what we're doing better. And like I said before, all you got to do is just uh, drag with your mouse and set the velocity now you can right click to delete any of these um, you'll see two different modes over here you'll see sticky mode and paint mode now with sticky mode you when you select it doesn't do anything when you drag left and right it's only going to affect the, the current cell that you have um, selected now I'll put it on paint mode and you can it's going to affect your your um, X value not only your Y value uh, this makes it really easy to delete a whole pattern because all you have to do is just select down and drag and if you have like like a snare rush or something you want to do it's going to be easy for that uh, I typically typically in paint mode I uh, put it in sticky mode if I'm doing like something really intricate 
So that's the difference between sticky and paint mode. Now you'll see over here your times. So now when you click on your time, uh, you can clear a pattern here. Like let's say we just draw something like this over here. We can clear the pattern if we want to from there. Uh, your speed is going to be, you can do half speed or you can do double speed. Uh, this makes it really easy for if you want to do some really fast like snare rushes or if you just want to slow the pattern down and not have a lot going on. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. You can do triplets or you can do regular 16th, 16th notes and your bars can go up to 64 bars total. So you can really, really do a lot here as far as um, how intricate you want to make a pattern and how many variations you want to do. We'll set it to 32 for just this example. We'll just do a straight four on the floor. Just something really easy. Kind of add some attenuation right there for that. So another thing you'll notice up here too, you can hit edit all and then that'll bring up all of the times for each one of your channels. Uh, a lot easier to do that when you're going through here. Uh, you know, we can use these, or I, I always just use the edit all because it's just easier to see what you're doing for each channel. Um, now, for each one of these channels, what makes it neat is that the sequencer is not bound to you know one time signature for every single one of your your patterns or every single one of your channels. For each one of these channels, you can do whatever you want. So you could. You could even have triplets on this channel, or and then you can have straight sixteenth notes on this channel. Um, you can, you know, do sixty-four notes here, or sixty-four cells with thirty-two cells. You can speed this one up, slow that one down. There's just really a ton you can do here. And once you kind of get used to the way this works, uh, it makes 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 it very very easy to to write drums on this. Uh, so we'll just add like kind of a kind of a snare here. And obviously up here too, we can mute everything with the mute button. Uh, unmute it by turning that off. So we'll just do a snare, we'll do a clap. This one we don't need a lot of variation, so we're just going to do 16th notes. Kind of mess with the EQ a little bit. Now, what I want to get into, the these two buttons here are going to be your send effects. So the first send over here in your send effects is going to be your reverb. Uh, second is going to be your flanger. So I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to our clap. And I won't really get into how to use these effects because they're very self-explanatory. Um, you know, these are just reactor, library, reverb, and flanger effects. Uh, th these are included in like the Reactor 5. Uh, I think these come from Reactor 5. Uh, this is like a microspace, and this is a flanger from Reactor 5. So we'll just kind of mess with that a little bit, maybe turn the high down. And last thing I'm going to do here is just add some hi-hats just to kind of make it complete. We don't need to do anything fancy, so we can set our, our cells to eight cells or eight bar, eight, um, eight beats really. So this is going to be uh, one and a two and a one and a two and a, and up here you have, you know, up to eight, one and a two and a three and a four and a, so two full bars, one bar, half bar. And as I said before, you'll get used to the way this works. This is a really, really fun, fun way to make loops. So we'll just do something simple here. You'll see me, I do this a lot. Change around our hi-hat. I think 15 sounds good. And we're going to add some stereo to that. And as you can hear, kind of a left and right stereo offset with this left and right button. A little bit of reverb, a little bit of sizzle. Okay, so as you can see, it's really easy to uh, really easy to make a drum beat with this. And now you can hit clear all here too. And if you want to just clear the whole pattern, it'll ask you if you want to. I'm not going to do that now. 
Uh, but if you wanted to clear everything, just hit yes. So we'll hit no. Um, now this button right here, this pattern one to all, this is something I put in here just because it makes it easier to, if you, to make a whole bunch of different patterns for, you know, a snapshot. So when this pattern one to all is activated, you'll go to your other patterns here too, and you're not going to be able to write anything on your other patterns. Uh, this is because with pattern one, we'll control everything. So as you, if I had that on before, it would have done everything. But you see, if I go in here and I kind of, you know, redraw these patterns, you'll see they're on pattern, pattern three, pattern two, pattern four. Uh, so if you want to, I do that a lot. If I want, I'll draw the same pattern for pattern one for each one of these, and then I'll just kind of edit these and make like some fills or something, so I don't have to redraw the pattern every single time. Uh, again, this is this this button here is specifically for when you're creating a brand new pattern. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this on, on a pattern that's already been built. So this is specifically for like an empty pattern. You want to make something new, uh, just. Turn that on, and everything you draw in here will go to each one of these channels. So we'll turn it off, and now we need to get into the effects. The effects are kind of the bread and butter to how this works. Uh, you'll have your global effects here. We have uh, our filters, and this is just from the reactor user library. We have uh, low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch. And I added a mix here, so if you want to, if you want to go in here, now the cutoff isn't doing anything because I don't have it mixed in. But really good to use your mix with like the high pass or the band pass filters, so you don't have to, you know, automate it on and off. So a lot of fun. And we have our built-in compressor here too. Uh, really special thanks to uh, Salamander Anagram. This was a, a series he did on how to build a compressor. Um, I did a stereo version of his tutorial and I've added a couple different things in here over time, but this is a really, really good compressor. I won't get into how to use a compressor. There's, there's all kinds of videos out there on how to use a compressor and all kinds of videos on how to use filters. So I won't get into that. Now, what we're going to look at now, this is kind of the bread and butter. This is the mod effects. These mod effects here are, there's five different mod effects. We have our pitch delay. Uh, we have a bit reducer and a frequency shifter, comb filter, a glitch stutter, and a pitch warp effect. Now, you'll see your controls for each one of these effects up here, and you can, you can, Activate each one of these effects just like just like normal. If you just had a normal normal you know effect here with your knobs, as you can see here, when we adjust our mix, now I can just have that static like that playing, um, or what I can do is. I can, there's two different options. The first option is I can set my mix to be activated with a sequencer. So if I have it like this, okay, it's always playing, which is fine. But what I might want to do is, you know, I only want to activate that like every half note or something. So you can click this button here, your mix to sequencer A, now on sequencer A here, I only want to activate my mix uh, when I tell it to. So I can put my mix there, maybe do some mix right there, and listen to how it sounds. Pretty neat. So we can do the same thing for each one of these. There's two different sequencers for two different parameters. Generally, it's going to be one sequencer for the mix and one sequencer for like, uh, you know, a parameter that adjusts the sound. So our pitch here and this pitch delay, basically what it does is it it's a cloud delay. So when you have your when you have your pitch set up, it's going to adjust the, the delay. Uh, it's going to increase the pitch as the delay increases. Uh, if you have it down, it's going to decrease the pitch as the delay goes down and just to have 
kind of give you an idea how that sounds. We'll just unmute it. As you can hear there, the pitch is going down and the pitch goes up. So we'll go to sequencer B now. I can put my pitch to sequencer B. What's going to happen there is um, the this is going to be that pitch knob we just looked at, but we're going to be adjusting it from here. So you can adjust your pitch right here. As you can have some really interesting stuff. And now you can do this for each one of these effects. Uh, they're pretty similar, so I won't really get into each one. Uh, but as you can see here, this is uh, it's a lot of fun to do this. You can really have a lot of variations. You can adjust the speed down here if you want. Do double speed. Or just keep everything in normal. And just for the sake of tutorial, uh, we'll look at the other ones. The stutter is a little bit different uh, with the stutter effect here. Um, if you want to put the, the gate activated here, uh, this is a basically just a glitch stutter effect. Your times, you can do triplets or you can do just standard time here. Uh, we're just going to do eighth notes. So what happens here is uh, when we activate it, here, this will activate the gate, so you'll hear what I'm talking about. And we can also adjust the time here to be set to the sequencer. So you can do some really, really neat stuff with these effects. Um, a lot of the things I like to do is I really love comb filters. Um, the frequency redu reducer is really, really fun to use. And the pitch warper is just going to be a, just a, it just adjusts the, uh, the pitch of the sample. It sounds really grainy. You can adjust the grains here. Uh, it's a really, really neat effect from the Reactor 5 user library. Um, so now that we have that, we can look at how the link button works. Uh, as you can see now, uh, there's a lock button on all of these. Uh, basically what that means is, is that you're kind of locked out from the MIDI keyboard really affecting anything going on. Uh, when you press the link button here, you can activate each one of these effects by pressing the, um, by pressing the MIDI key. So as you can hear when we turn back on our pitch delay, now that the link button is activated, so you can see it's not doing anything. Now if I press uh, C1 on my MIDI keyboard, then it's activated. <clears throat> and these are a lot of fun to use uh, if you want to do kind of like some on the fly um, effects, but you don't want to have everything be like so mechanical, like um, so predictable you can you know adjust your effects by doing that um, you can look at this how to right here this is also gives you kind of if you forget which one is which this kind of this is these are the main keys you're going to be using on your MIDI keyboard c3 d3 you know e3 c3 through g uh, c your sharp keys are going to adjust your pattern as you can see here i'm pressing these and adjusting the pattern uh, i can press each one of these to activate my effects on the bottom so there's just really a lot of variation you can do here uh, with your effects. And we will look at a better example and one of these uh, one of these presets right here. And I'll kind of do a little play example 
Uh, you'll see me switch in between the patterns with the sharp keys and switching through the effects with the um, natural keys. <laughs> As you can see, there's just a whole bunch of different variations you can do. Uh, it's a lot of fun to use that. So once you get used to how the mod effects works, you'll really be able to do a lot of fun things with this. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, you can always reach out to me um, through Facebook. You can find me there or just go to the Reactor user library. I'm always on there. Uh, so anyways, I hope everybody enjoys and thanks.